She's at the top of my list now. Mm -hmm. You think she rocks some bonnet locks? I think she would if she saw my work. Yeah, so we got to introduce her to it. We do, we do. Uh, look, I could imagine, I could visualize her in the bonnet. Yes, doing okay. Her thing. Law of attraction, let's see it first yes. and visualize it. Yes, yes, yes. So, and the Oprah effect. Right. Would you be ready for the Oprah effect? Yes, I'm okay. ready. Okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> you know, once Oprah, Oprah yeah. mentions it, it just... Right. Blows right on yeah. up. So I'm, I'm going to claim it. So, okay. Yeah. All right. I believe it for you. All right. Well, welcome to Conversations with Nicole. We are here at the Mendeza Ngozi Art and Braiding Gallery here in Tallahassee, Florida. And my special guest is Miss Valencia Jones, the owner operator. Welcome, Val. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yeah. <laughs> so, Mendeza and Gozi, you've been doing this for more than 20 years mm -hmm. from Ocala. Right. Fam, you alum. Mm -hmm. um, psychology major. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Single mom. Yes. The one <laughs> beautiful to Cody. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. And you started braiding hair when? Well, I actually started braiding hair at home, um, friends and family, and I learned the craft through my mom and my sister. But while I was in school, um, I braided a lot of my friends' hair, you know, after school and built a lot of relationships that way. And while braiding hair, um, at home, I also got the opportunity to, you know, when you're braiding hair, you sit for long periods of time. So sitting long periods of time, I, it gave me the opportunity to build relationships and um, have intimate conversations and, you know, just build friendships through braiding. Mm -hmm. I can absolutely mm -hmm. see that. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who don't know, Val did my hair. Yep, I and did. it's looking beautiful. <laughs> months ago, right? A, yeah, it's, a been, month a, it's been a couple a month. of months. It's been, right. it's been okay. more than two months. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so and it's still intact. And I get a lot yeah. of compliments on it, so thank you. Good, good. Yeah. So you came here to FAMU. I did, yeah. So back in 1990, I graduated from high school and I decided to attend FAMU for no other reason than the band. <laughs> okay, that's a good reason. <laughs> so, you know, I used to uh, go to the classic and got an opportunity to see the band and um, just all of the black people, you know. And so I decided that I wanted to go to Florida A&M University. Mm -hmm. um, but when I came here, I had to figure out what it was that I wanted to major in. I had, you know, I really didn't have an idea. I was actually the first in my immediate family to attend college. So navigating the process was something that I kind of had to do on my own. Um, yeah, something okay. I had to, you know, kind of do on my own. Okay. And when you, you still were doing hair at the time, correct? Mm -hmm. Right. So when I came here to go to, to FAMU, I had the gift to braid. I didn't have a job, but I had to figure out, you know, my major and some type of way to, to you know, have an income. Mm -hmm. And so what I did was I decided that since I was at home sitting down with my friends and building these relationships and having these deep conversations, I thought psychology would be the department for me. Okay. So what I did was I put up signs all around FAMU's campus advertising about, you know, me and braiding. Um, while in the psychology department, I didn't realize how what it was that I had the gift to do related to what was going on in that department at the time. Okay. If anybody knows, the psychology department is African-centered. And so I learned a lot about myself and my culture. And I realized that braiding, what I had the passion to do, related a whole lot to our culture. It does. Um, yeah. yeah, and so I got the opportunity to 
pouring my braiding skills while seeing how psychology related and would help me with the business that I was developing on the campus of Florida A&M. It sounds like it all kind of divinely it, lined up. Yeah, it really did. And it was kind of um, easy building a clientele on the campus because it was, you know, uh, a historically black university so we had a um, you know black men and women there and these kids were away from their regular stylists at home mm -hmm. and so when they came to fam you know they needed something that was going to last them a long time till they got back to their stylists and so while I was there braiding their hair um, the styles would last like a whole semester so what I was doing was economical and it also was healthy for their hair. And with it lasting a long time, I got the opportunity to see how it would grow out and just be really, really healthy in its natural state. A lot of the um, students would come to me because they would be experiencing problems too, mm -hmm. like, you know, breakage with relaxers um, and just different things that they may be, you know, experiencing problems with. Mm -hmm. But I quickly realized while braiding hair um, that when we left it alone, you know, now we call it protective styles. But back then we were just putting it up, you know, braiding it down or putting it under, you know, those are some of the terms, terms that, that we used. use, mm -hmm. you know. But now that natural hair has become popular, you hear a lot of people talking about protective styles. But that's something that our grandmothers and parents mm -hmm. knew long, long time ago, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. because we would get our hair braided to swim or right. braided to go on vacations mm -hmm. and, you know, those types of things. So, um, yeah, back then before the... Um, the movement, the natural hair movement actually happened, I got the opportunity to, to see firsthand how healthy the hair was in its natural state. Okay. And like I said, you know, being in the psychology department, I'm learning a lot about who we are. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I'm learning about even braided styles, you know, and got the opportunity to um, just through some of the professors over there, uh, they taught about braided styles and they meant things, you know, they, they um, had significance. Yes, they mm -hmm. did. Um, like if you braided your hair, sometimes people with girls or young girls would braid their hair in different patterns mm -hmm. when they were going through different rites of passage. Okay. Um, you have women who would cut their hair off if they were going through mourning, mm -hmm. um, you know, those types of things. So with me going through that department, braiding hair, I got the opportunity to share that information too with a lot of my clients Excellent. as well. So you learn more about the symbolism behind some of the yes. So let's fast forward to Mandisa. So okay. tell me about the beginnings in terms of when you got started in the business. After I graduated, I had to decide what it was that I wanted to do. You know, I was really passionate about braiding and um, I had a lot of clients and so it was like, well, what are you going to do? Um, and I decided to go ahead and just open up the official business, Mandisa Ngozi Art and Braiding Gallery. Okay. And when I decided to open up the business, they didn't even have a license in place back then. Mm -hmm. And so what we did was we opened it up under Art Gallery because that's what I considered what I was doing to be. It an was art an art. Gallery. Yeah, okay. it was art. It was, um, you know, it was a craft. And because they didn't have a license in place, you know, we open up under art gallery. I mean, you could go and I could have went and gotten my cosmetology license, mm -hmm. but I wasn't interested in that at all. And it didn't really serve what you were doing. No, not mm -hmm. at all. I looked at the curriculum and they didn't have anything in there about braiding, maybe a couple pages on French braiding. OK. Mm -hmm. And then that was it. And so I can recall back then going up to the Department of Business and Professional Regulations uh, with my books and all the information that I had gathered, you know, through the psychology department and through other mentors that I, I you know, I'd met doing this. And um, but they didn't put anything in place until big businesses started to do what it was mm -hmm. they were doing. And um, those big businesses, meaning like Bush Gardens, Disney World, you know, when you go to those theme parks, you'll see um, people there braiding and adding extensions to okay. hair. Mm -hmm. And so with these big businesses doing it, then they figured that, yeah, we need to put something in place because they weren't going to make these people um, who were braiding hair in these theme parks spend thousands of dollars and lots of hours um, studying and doing something that didn't relate to what it was that was happening mm -hmm. there. 
Um, so, like I said, we opened under... So you under, gotta push the envelope on this, Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When we opened, like I said, I defied the laws. Mm -hmm. And we opened under art gallery because that's what it was that we were doing. And that way we couldn't be governed by the Department of Business and Professional Regulations. But, you know, there came, like I said, when they, the big businesses started to do it, so then they did put a license in place um, for braiding. Okay. And what was required is for you to be tested in sanitation, HIV, and scalp disease. So I felt that that was reasonable. And um, in order to, you know, the craft itself was something, like I said, that's been passed down from generation to generation. Right. So a lot of the times, you know, braiding is something that you're just naturally born with. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or and, so, and, and you observe your mothers yeah, and right. the, the, the women in the family doing it. And that's mm -hmm. kind of how you pick it up as yeah, well. Yeah. yeah. And that's how I pick, um, you know, the craft up myself. Mm -hmm. um, so after I graduated, clientele was big and... I decided that I was going to stick with what it was that I enjoyed, what I love. And okay. I was already making money and built a big clientele. And it was funny because back then I would tell people, you know, I'm just going to continue to braid. You know, I graduated from the psychology department mm -hmm. and I just wanted to continue to do what it was that I was already doing. And I would get some flat. And then people would tell me, oh, so your mom sent you to school and all you're going to do is just braid? Mm -hmm. You know, that's what you're going to do? You're just going to braid? And I'm right. like, yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And that's not I'm what she went to school for, right? No, Girl. not at all. But what I went to school for fit in with it what it, it was that I decided to do. Right. Well, yeah. what I was saying is, mm -hmm. you know, that's I'm sure that was some of the pushback is you didn't go to school for Brayton. You went right. to school for psychology. Mm -hmm. So you need to be working in your field. Right. But what that did was it just opened the doors for me to just educate, mm -hmm. you know, educate those people and to let them see how what it was that I went to school to do really fit in it with what it was that I decided to continue to do. Absolutely. Because especially when you're sitting with women who are um, deciding that they're wanting to wear their hair in its natural state, a lot of issues will come up, mm -hmm. you know, with that topic alone. Right. And so my psychology degree was very, very helpful. Uh, and it still is to it, this day because, I'm, yeah, I'm spending a lot of time, intimate time with, you know, women who trust me to their crowns. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so mm -hmm. I have to be prepared myself um, mentally to prepare them mentally. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Wow. So tell me about the name Mendeza Ngozi. What does oh, it mean and what's the inspiration Mendeza behind it? Mendeza Ngozi, um, my oldest sister. So there's three girls. I come from a family of five, two boys and three girls. And my oldest sister, um, she braided my hair a lot and taught me how to braid. And um, she was the namer in the family. And back then she would name all of, you know, her kids. They had African names because they had meanings. And so when I told her that I wanted to open a business, um, she went and she looked through an African name book and found the name Mandisa Ngozi. And Mandisa Ngozi, it means sweet blessings mm -hmm. in Swahili. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've always wanted to provide. So when you enter Mandisa Ngozi, I wanted you to just leave with sweet blessings mm -hmm. whether that be a beautiful hairdo a beautiful conversation or you know pieces that we've made um because since we started the business mandiza and gozi our goal was to always let you know or to um make it visible how our culture fit in with what it was that we were doing so when you come into mandiza and gozi and you look around the music that you hear is going to relate to culture. Um, the pictures on the wall, you know, you're going to see how the braided styles, you know, um, related to us and who we are. I just wanted anyone to come in to be inspired, to be educated, and to be uplifted, you know? And so that's what we set out to do. And, you know, just all of our products and services, you know, we just wanted it to relate to our culture yep. and just, you know, a healthy and an alternative to, you know, chemicals. Mm -hmm. Now briefly talk about your products and services. Um, so here at Mendeza and Gozi, we just specialize in natural hair and natural hair care. Like I said, we give women an alternative to the chemicals. Okay. Um, 
our products are all natural and once I started to do hair you know you start to research and learn about the things that's going to be good for your hair mm -hmm. so that opened the doors to us developing products so we have our shampoos and conditioners and natural hair oils and body butters and mm -hmm. services right and services another service that we offer is you know now I actually license in the state of Florida mm -hmm. so if you do want to get your braiders license mm -hmm. you can come to us and we can certify you to braid wow. um, now in the state of Florida. And then once you receive your license, and like I said, what the state of Florida requires is for you to be tested in HIV, mm -hmm. sanitation, and scalp disease. And then once you get that license, we go on to train you even more. So if there are techniques that you're wanting to learn or just natural hair education, those are some of the things that we offer here as okay. well. Okay. Yeah, so and, and then the service. styles, you have a lot of different styles that you do, but some mm -hmm. things signature styles as well. So talk a little bit about that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Signature styles. Right now, um, we do what's called bonate locks, and that's been really popular. Um, but we've done all types of lock extensions. You know, back in the 90s, um, Erica Badu, she actually gave me a call because she saw some of our work in a magazine. Mm -hmm. And the work was actually handmade lock extensions that we developed on our own. Wow. Right. And so now I go into stores and I look around and I see the manufactured lock extensions that mm -hmm. they're making. So I really think that we were like just you way were, oh, ahead yes. of our time. You were definitely I was like way ahead really of time. Yeah. ahead of my time back then because, yeah, um, the lock extensions was one of our signature styles back mm -hmm. then. And um, now the Bonate locks, we do those. Um, they resurface mm -hmm. under Goddess Locks. Yes. Um, Megan Good, she got her hair done that way. But actually, Actually, we started calling them Bonet locks. locks years ago Before. because of Lisa Bonet. Mm -hmm. You know, the lock has a loose curl texture. And so they just give you a, like a looser curl textured look like Lisa Bonet locks. Okay. And so, yeah, okay. so we've been doing a lot of those. But um, I'm just someone who will get hair and, you know, different things and play with it and come up with our own, you know, styles okay. and stuff. So I really like to play and just come up with different things that's going to stand out. Okay, well, good. Conversations with Nicole is proud to launch our new website featuring past episodes, information on collaborative events, partner opportunities, and more. Visit cwnmoments.com and discover how we are connecting the community through conversations. Again, that's cwnmoments.com. Conversations with Nicole. Now, one of the things I know that you have done is the Capital City Natural mm -hmm. Hair and Health Expo. So mm -hmm. I want you to definitely talk about that. Oh, wow. So the Capital City Natural Hair and Health Expo, this is going to be our seventh year this year. And um, the expo is for women who are natural and those who may be inspiring to go natural or wanting to go natural. Um, and even if you don't want to go natural, it's just a great place to come and to network. It is. Uh, so the Capital City Natural Hair and Health Expo, we have vendors from all over. When I say all over the world, mm -hmm. all over the world, mm -hmm. because we've had um, people, sponsors from out of the country. Um, and we have seminars, mm -hmm. inspiring seminars and workshops, product demonstrations. Um, we invite entertainers to come mm -hmm. and entertain because it's, it's an all day event. Right. We usually start about 11 and we're done around seven. And the main part, the part that I really love is the hair and fashion show. Yes. Cause it gives me the opportunity to just, you know, be creative mm -hmm. and, you know, we invite all of our clients and the public and they can just come and just see what you know Mandiza and Gozi has to offer when mm -hmm. it comes to creativity and hairstyles and it's not just us we invite other salons and natural hairstylists to come mm -hmm. and to network and to share their craft and it's just been a really good um the show's just been really good and the feedback that we get is even better and that's what keeps me going you know all of the positive feedback that we get is what I look forward to and that's what keeps me going and why I do it that's you know great. So, um, you've heard people talk about good hair, mm -hmm. right? And yeah. Chris Rock did a movie about that. Mm -hmm. And I think good hair is something that we as black women have struggled with. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, the thought behind good hair is this hair that's straight, 
It doesn't have a, a you know curl or kinkle or what we call nappy hair. Mm-hmm. What's your thought about that? Wow. Um, it's not our fault. It's not our fault. I, I think that um, everybody has good hair, you know, as well as it's groomed and maintained. But we have to think about where we came from, you know, how we got here. Mm-hmm. We got here on a boat, you know, that took a long time to get here. A lot of us, you know, a lot of our here ancestors. In America. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And can you imagine riding for that long period of time and not having the tools and the things that we need to, to work with our hair, you know, in our culture, we did so many beautiful things, you know, to our hair and even extensions, you know, those are things that we did in African culture. Some people will, uh, you know, have the misconception that, you know, the weaves and the extension, all of those are things that are new. Mm-mm. And doing my research, you know, people of status, you know, they wore wigs, but what you have to understand is that the wigs and the hairstyles, um, they were they came from us and who we are. It was black hairstyles, you know. But coming over here to America, not having the tools and the products and the things that we had to work with our hair, it made it difficult, mm-hmm. you know. And so when we got off the boat and our hair was all matted, a lot of the slave masters and the people that waited on us, they made us cut it off. Mm-hmm. And it stripped us of our identity and who we were, you know. And so we went straight to the fields. We didn't have the time to groom my hair and to do all these creative styles like we were used to doing. And so that's where the standard of beauty kind of started, you know? Yes. And so... You mentioned tools, and mm-hmm. there are a lot of tools out here now for natural hair. Right. What do you say to women who say, I can't wear my hair natural? It is how you were born, and you really can wear your hair natural. I think that women may need, you know, just a little help because of, you know, they just need help. Help from someone maybe like myself who has been working with hair um, for over 20 years, you know. And it takes a lot of patience, too. Now, everybody's hair is different. So when you come to Mendeza and Goes, it's not like you're just going to come in and get your hair done. We have to do a consultation because everybody's hair is different. We got to learn your hair, your texture. And then once you learn your hair, you learn your texture, then you got to accept the styles that are going to work for you with your hair and your texture. We all have good hair. It's just knowing the styles that's going to work best for you. Mm -hmm. Um, Everybody's hair, like I said, is different. You know, one person will come to me and they may have different curl patterns throughout their hair. Um, And so we have to learn, you know, the styles that's going to work well for them Mm -hmm. and and their hair. And their different textures of their hair. And their different textures. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Mm -hmm. And women get frustrated. Mm -hmm. They get frustrated because, um, you know... When you're growing up and you're just used to having your hair relaxed and you decide that you want to wear it in its natural state, it takes learning. It takes patience Mm -hmm. Um, because you don't know how to deal with it. A lot lot of women just don't know how to deal with their hair in its natural state. And so that's when you get these terms of it being um, nappy or unruly or unmanageable, you know, those types of things. And I think that once you learn and you take the time and you're patient, you know, it's going to take time. Um, with that, you'll learn what's going to be best for you and your hair. Like, you can't just come to me. Like, an individual, they can't just come to me and say, okay, just make my hair everything I want it to be. You can't you do know? that, now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can. I can help you to do it. But everybody's okay. hair is different. Right. And so, like, I would have to learn you, your texture. You know, so... Hair is really, really intimate. Mm -hmm. Um, I just recently got certified as a trichologist. Um, What a trichologist is, is a dermatologist Mm -hmm. to the hair and the scalp. Um, So as the business and my clients has grown, I try to grow with them. And I try to listen to what their needs are. You know, I started this business over 20 years ago, and a lot of my clients are still with me today. And because of that, um, you know, you see 
clients, they're going through different stages of life. And so I'm recognizing these different stages and these different changes in their hair. We have some women who may have started different medications and you may see thinning in their hair. Um, you know, just some people may just become, you know, thin in areas and it's just hereditary. And because of seeing these different things, I decided that I needed to go and be certified a little bit deeper so that I can recognize the changes that my clients were going through. And so now I am Dr. Valencia Jones, okay, Dr. trichologist Jones. and um, Congratulations. non-medical doctor mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and basically just natural. Uh, I just work naturally to help you to come up with remedies that's going to be helpful for whatever situation that you may be going through okay. um, with your hair. Excellent. Yeah. We're going to take a break right here and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Conversations with Nicole. I've been talking with Valencia Jones of Mendeza Ngozi Art and Braiding Gallery. Val, tell me who else you have working here with you. My family. I'm so happy um, to have my sister and my daughter. Um, we all work together. Um, my daughter, Chakoti, I actually licensed her when she turned 16. My sister, Denise, um, she's a, a part of the team. So it's a family business. That's great. It's a family business. That's great. Well, you all do awesome work. Thank you. <laughs> and you do a great service to the community. Thank you. And thank you for just fighting for African-American women in our natural hair. So thank you for all that you've done. And we look forward to seeing and hearing more about Mendes and Gozi in the future. Absolutely. Okay. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us on Conversations with Nicole, where we're connecting the community through conversations. We'll see you next time.